Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Yoshu Fukushu, the fourth studio record by the Japanese metal band Maximum the Hormone. Today we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the record so I had to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is probably similar to yours, I found them because of the anime Death Note, I've watched it back in the year 2008 and they had two songs there, the opening What's Up People and the ending The Subobili. Those songs were hard and I had to check out their entire discography because of those ones and I've loved it. I've been their fan ever since. I remember waiting 5 years for this record to come out. We have 15 songs here but actually only 10 are new. We have 3 tracks from 2011 and 2 songs from the Tsume 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 single from 2008. Here's the lineup, we've got Daisuke on the vocals, Nao on the drums, Maximum the Ryokun on the guitars and Ue or Yue-chan on the bass. What's interesting about this is the fact that on the first record ASAA crew the original members played like Sugi and Ki and I'm glad that we have those new guys, you know Ryokun and Yue-chan. They are the identity of this band. Like, this is the classic lineup from whole EP to this day. The production is tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping, just the way I like it. I love how you can clearly hear every instrument and the vocals are mixed perfectly. Message is diverse. The songs are about various topics. They range from very serious stuff like abuse, bullying in school, society, politics, personal struggles, relationship issues. But we also have some more funnier songs, like there's a song here about sandals. We also have some songs about sex and rape, which is not fun at all. We have a track about sperm and also a song against a pirate site called Winnie. There's also one song here called Beauty Killosum, which is about the unnatural beauty standards in the world. This is actually an interesting record from the lyrical standpoint. You just have to understand Japanese or check out the translations. And let me just say that not every song has a translation. And it's not like those lyrics are easy to understand even if you know Japanese, because they are not. But I still recommend checking out the lyrics, structure of the tracks is mostly advanced, which means we have that standard structure of intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro, but it's a little bit more technical than that. Usually they fill in the middle part of the songs with new segments that never repeat, and the chorus comes back right at the end. Sometimes the songs also start with the chorus, and then we have a verse, a bridge, another verse, another change, the chorus, then breakdown, another change, and another change again, and then chorus and the outro. It depends on the song. I must say that I truly enjoy how they structure their songs because you never know what is going to happen next. You are sure that they are going to repeat the chorus and the verses, but you don't know when exactly. The music on this record is mostly nu metal in the vein of old school system way down, but it's mixed with hardcore punk and slight funk, rap, pop and death metal influences. We also have some death courage breakdowns here and there, not on every song but they are present. The album starts with the title song Yoshu Fukushu and this one is a critique of the Japanese school system. But it's also a song that celebrates youth, so it's an interesting piece from the lyrical standpoint. And the first thing you're going to notice here is the intro, which is very soothing and melodic. We have the drummer singing here, she has a very beautiful voice, and then the heavier part kicks in. And the first thing you're going to notice here is the drumming. Nao is killing it on this record, she's one of the best drummers out there. I'm pretty sure she's the best female one, because her precision, groove and energy is unmatched. She can play fast or slow, it doesn't matter because it's always amazing. Then we have the bass work by Ue-chan. Some people say he sounds like the dude from Red Hot Chili Peppers, because that's his biggest inspiration. But I feel like he outmatched him years ago. He just has more energy and feeling in his playing. I love Wechan, he enriches the sound of the band 
and he also provides backing vocals in some of the songs. All of the other band members are actually the main vocals because they appear on every song, that's actually crazy. Especially when you think about that Nao plays the drums and sings at the same time. That is legendary, just wow. Then we have the guitar work by her brother, sorry for mispronouncing their names by the way. Ryukun is the most talented member of this band because he writes most of the songs. I love his guitar playing, it has that energy of hardcore music but mixed with all of the other stuff like thrash metal, death metal, hardcore, metalcore, metal whatever. His playing is so energetic and gives you strength to just live, I love that shit. And his vocals are also beautiful, he sings and yells on almost every song, that's just fantastic. Finally you have the vocalist, Daisuke, and he's here to rap, scream and growl. He also sings sometimes, I really enjoy everything he does. This is one of the most talented bands I've ever heard because every band member just brings something different to the table, it just works and creates this one coherent experience. To put it shortly, Yoshu Fukushu is a banger, I love every single second of this song, especially that pan break in the middle, you know, and then they're screaming, <laughs> I love that part, and also the melodic breakdown, I would say, where they are all singing and there's like just drumming march beat to do 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 do. This is a highlight of this record. 10 out of 10. Utsuku Shiki Op Tsuki no Baku Kekiki, the Blue Hearts cover. Now, this is just only 30 seconds long. It's supposed to be a cover. I don't know why. This sounds just like an intro to the next song. And it's fine, but. Like, why isn't it merged with the next song? I have no idea. 7 out of 10. Utsuku Shiki Hitobito no Uta. Now, this is one of my favorite songs on this record. I love the beginning, the singing. The chorus is on fire. Like, I love it so much. The crazy vocals. <laughs> it just all works and it brings a smile on my face. Check out this song. You're not going to regret it. Every single part, musically and vocally, slaps. 11 out of 10. Banjo Sandal Dance. Now this is that song about sandals, and it was even played in some sandal commercial. I'm like, what the hell is going on? This track is fun, but it's one of my least favorites, like the second least favorite song. I do enjoy the bass work here. It's that thing that stands out the most. The guitar riffs and the vocals slap, as usual, same as the drums. But for some reason, I don't feel it as much as the previous songs. 8 out of 10. True to the Beam. This sounds like a sequel to that song from the previous record. You know, Chu Chu Muema or something like that. I love this stuff, especially the bass work, the punk elements, the fast, heavy guitar riffs. The vocals are fun. The chorus, a little bit too corny for me, like too happy. But I still enjoy it. This is a fantastic track. 9 out of 10. F, which could be also called Frieza, is a song from the 2008 single. It's about Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. And this song is one of the highlights here. I love the heaviness, the vocals. Doom, 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 doom. The chorus freeze, 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 freeze. It. Great stuff. But the verses and the bridge are my favorite parts here. This is a fantastic song. Even the creator of Dragon Ball manga was like, this shit slaps, I need to have this in my anime movie. And he used it actually. This is just great. 11 out of 10. Tsume Tsume Tsume, which could be described as Nail Nail Nail. Now this is my favorite Maximum The Hormone song like ever. I love the 2008 single version. It's fast, it's heavy, it has lots of changes. I love when we have segments where the vocalist and the guitarist are screaming and singing, but we also have one verse where the drummer is singing and she's also killing it. This song is actually quite disturbing from the lyrical standpoint. I still don't know what they're talking about here exactly. Is this song against rape or is it about people who only care about having sex? and they are making fun of them. It's hard to say. I do love the energy here, the intensity, the snare, 
the snare sounds so heavy, it reminds me of Metallica Saint Anger for some reason, it has that boink sound to it. Love that bass work here, dun 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 dun. the guitar riffs, this is probably the most evil sounding song from this band, at least when it comes to the guitar riffs. But the vocals also slap, the growling, the screaming, the yelling, the chorus while being melodic and sang by the guitarist also slaps, I have nothing against this song. But then we have this version from the album, the 2013 one. For some reason they added a live verse in the middle. Like there are people there and they are clapping and they're like one mom one one more one one more. I'm like, this is annoying me. I don't like this change. It's bad. So that's my only complaint. So for the original version from 2008, I'm giving it 12 out of 10. But for this album one, just 11 out of 10. Rock Oyei Mayoi. Now this is actually quite simple song, it's only 2 minutes long, but it's heavy, it's straight to the point. It's mostly a hardcore punk type of a track, but it has lots of melodies and energy. I truly enjoy it. Not my favorite here, but it works in the context of the record. 9 out of 10. Unbelievable. Now this track, yet again, slaps. I love the main melody it just it has so much character to it the verses kind of remind me of the band Bee Gees, you know ha 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 staying alive staying alive it has that vibe to it but the chorus is the best part and also those angrier metal noises in the background great shit 10 out of 10 alien now this song was released as a single with a music video, and that music video, wow, just wow. It's an experience I will never forget. Go watch it, go watch it right now if you haven't yet. This song is probably the easiest way to convey what Maximum the Hormone is to someone. At first we have lyrics about how the government is bad, the society is crumbling, and everyone is dying and crying, it's so evil sounding. We have a deathcore breakdown like after the first minute with growling and it fucking slaps. Then we have that funky hardcore punk melodies in the middle. Boom, pa, pa, boom. I love the bass there. And then the drummer starts singing like she's in an anime or some shit. And they're basically singing about stopping that pirate side Winnie from distributing their music illegally. And what's even funnier is the fact that Winnie wasn't even doing anything back then, like nobody was using it, so the whole song is pointless basically. It's so hilarious, it's like I would do a song today called Stop Napster, and I would sing Stop Stop Napster, but nobody is using Napster, like Napster is dead. Still I find it hilarious that in under 5 minutes they've combined new metal, death metal, deathcore, funk, punk, pop music. I love this song with all of my heart. Stop, stop, Winnie, upload. <laughs> 11 out of 10. My Girl. Now this song from the lyrical standpoint goes hard. Yet again, it's about sex or rape, it's hard to say. But what I love about it the most is the main guitar riff because it reminds me of the first Sum 41 record. Like it has that summer vibe to it. Like everybody is laughing and smiling. Do, 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 do. I love that shit. Then we have more heavier verses or pre-chorus melodies. Love that shit as well. The chorus slaps. I love it. But what I can criticize here is the outro. I don't like the keyboard elements there. That's the only thing I can cry about. Everything else is beautiful. 10 out of 10. Mesubuta no Ketsu ni Binta. Now this track is hilarious because it's about Gyaros. Those are the Japanese women that look like bimbos or some shit. I find it hilarious because I have no idea if this song is for or against them. Because at the end they're basically saying beat the shit out of them. And I don't know if that's supposed to be sexual or just like actual violence. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck is going on in this song. Nobody knows. But I love the atmosphere and the energy of this song. It's fast, it's straight to the point, it's under 3 minutes long. I love the chorus, the verse, just everything. <laughs> that outro is hilarious to me. 10 out of 10. Beauty Kilosome. Now this is the song about those unnatural beauty standards in today's society. 
I truly enjoyed the chorus here and the bridge, the verses not so much, they kinda get on my nerves, but the bridge, you know, the breakdown slaps, it's like comes out out of nowhere and you're like, yeah, that's the stuff. I love the growling here because it's almost like pig squares. Great shit, 9 out of 10. Maximum the Hormone, now this is the song from the 2011 single and it's like the essence of the band, it has every single one of their characteristics. When it comes to the lyrics, they are basically about eating lots of food and they are also referencing lots of their previous songs. This is a classic track, I have nothing against it. The chorus slaps, same as the bridge and the punky elements. 10 out of 10. Ko no sperm, now this song goes hard for many wrong reasons. The lyrics are, as you can guess, they are about sperm and this song is hilarious but also disgusting. It's funny to me that it sounds like something that would play in an anime or some children's fucking movie, whatever. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I am not a big fan of the happier moments in this song, but what's hilarious is the breakdown because it comes out of nowhere and it slaps so hard like you won't expect it. And it's the best part of the song and it even repeats at the end. I love the growling there, the screaming, it has energy and it stands in contrast with the intro and the verses which are very happy sounding like. It's an interesting song, to me it's the weakest one on the album by far because it's just too puppy for me, but I still enjoy it, 8 out of 10. And now we have a song that didn't make the cut for the album, it was on the 2008 Tsume 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 single, I have no idea why they didn't put it on the record. Like, they had space for that fucking The Blue Hearts cover, which is 30 seconds long. Why is it on the album? Why Kill All The 394 isn't? This one slaps, it's fast, it's straight to the point, it has that punk energy about it, the chorus is beautiful, and the outro is hilarious, because it has that meh sound, which they would always do on the previous releases. Great shit, 10 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, groupability, yeah, it's a masterpiece. I love this record from beginning to the end. It isn't my favorite Maximum The Hormone record, that would be the previous one, but this one is almost as good. The highlights here are Utsuku Shiki, Hito, Bito no Uta, Tsume Tsume Tsume, Frieza, Unbelievable, Alien, My Girl, Mesobuta, Maximum The Hormone, and Yoshu Fukushu. These tracks slap, like they are classics. I love this entire record with all of my heart. It doesn't have any weak songs. I guess the second track would be the weakest one, but it should be just merged with the third song. I don't know why they are separate. Was it worth the wait, those five years? Yes, it was. And now we've been waiting for 10 years for a new Maximum The Hormone record. I hope that someday it will be released because we need it. I'm kinda tired of having to wait 3 or 5 years for just one single or two singles. I want an actual album. I don't like EPs, I don't like singles. I want an album. I want 15 new fucking songs. <laughs> Give them to me right now. <laughs> Celebrate the Rossi by spinning this record today. It deserves your love and attention. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Use the description. I will see you in my other videos. Bye. Meh.